Yo, what's up guys, Turn and we're back with a brand new video. Today, we're going to be doing the last two events recap. So, if I'm not wrong, it is Paris Open, It's it was the Paris event, and also Minnesota. So, um, if you guys watch any kind of competitive COD at all, you would see the Florida out of nowhere curveball. Alright, these guys are disgusting. So, I don't, a lot of people are blaming on online. I don't really know because I don't. I haven't seen Awakening on land, so I think it's the same thing kind of like it was with Mac. Like, you gotta see them on land before you really know. Um, but yeah. So, I mean, these standings. I think before we had the Huntsman, we had them at number one on our last video. I didn't make a video on the recap because I knew these events were back to back, so I wanted to just bang out both of these videos or both of these events in one video to give you guys a lot more in one video because I feel like the other ones are kind of spaces off a little bit. But yeah, so as you can see, Florida—they're back to back champions. I don't even know where they were in the standings before. I think they were somewhere down here. They had like a hundred points. Um, but I mean, these guys have came to both these events ready to play uh... so they're back-to-back -back champions right now they are the only team crazy enough phase is still in first place because they are just very consistent they've got second in the past two events but florida is the only team with three event wins chicago dallas and phase all have two other teams yeah there's there's none um, so the first topic i want to cover today is uh, just kind of what happened throughout this event. So, um, I don't have my Gamepedia thing pulled up today, so I can't show you guys the specific matches and the scores of each match. But, I didn't think we really needed that, because I can kind of just go through it, because this is one of the events that I actually watch. Normally I don't watch them, because they just get kind of stale. I don't know, this game's kind of boring to watch, in my opinion. But, um, yeah. So, Chicago disappointed a lot of people thought that was going to be a team in finals after you know they win their first event with pristini and they have more practice going into the next one but no that didn't happen uh they got smoked um and yeah so florida wins both of those events phase is in the finals of both of those events it's i mean it's pretty crazy like i didn't think florida was really that good um I think Mox was holding that team back a lot, though. I will say that. Uh, just not even due to skill. It's just like his play style is very odd. Uh, but I feel like Awakening was a really good fit for that team. Um, and like a lot of people said, he kind of came out of nowhere. Like, uh, and I've had a chance to talk to the guy. I feel like he's really humble. Um, I've been talking to him a little bit. And, you know, it's it's really cool to see kind of those players have success that... Or coming out of the amateur scene because you haven't seen that a lot in the past so I think it's you know it's unique to see that for sure um, but yeah so the topic after that that we want to talk about is optic LA's crumble they were on a hot streak as you guys have kind of seen in my last video so what does this team do dash had a point six eight this event uh, they were all under a one even slasher uh, which has kind of been kind of the hard carry of this team, I would say, I guess. Uh, but, yeah. I d Whew. This team is like, like I said before, you know, gunless is always an option, but I don't know how well that's going to work just due to kind of the personalities on this team. And, I mean, Dashy and TJ are, from what everyone has said, more, you know, like, they like to they like to have fun, which is not bad because I think that does help scrim vibes. Like even personally, like I like it when my teammates, you know, when we're just vibing, we're just kicking it. Um, but yeah, like it's it hasn't been good for them. I'll say that much. Um, but yeah, so as you can see, I think there's they do have a really high chance of losing this eighth place spot. And if I'm not mistaken, I think that top eight start out in winners and these bottom four go to losers so a team that i could see kind of overtaking that spot i could see seattle i could see Gr honestly every team but paris i would say could probably break into that top eight spot 
Um, I think that if the subliners have another bad event, or they they haven't really had a bad event, but you know if they're not performing up to their standards, not winning their series, I think that these bottom tier teams, like I think these teams can make a run. Um, I think the Ultra picking up Kleenex, uh, that kid is disgusting. Um, I was just watching from the stream, uh, and I I think he's really good. I think there was a solid pickup for them. A lot of people thought that Classic shouldn't have been the one dropped. It should have been Bant. I think I agree with that, just because I think cl this is probably Classic's best game in a while, if we're being honest. Um, but yeah, so... Optic, I think they need a roster change. I think it's time. The, you know, with the five players they have on this team, they should not be underperforming. Uh, before they had J Cap, and that was kind of like, uh, you know, like everyone thought he was costing, but now you put Chino in, and he's doing a little bit better, and he does a little bit more on the map for that team in terms of like slaying, and uh, they're still just getting smoked. Um, the biggest example I can think of was the start. I think it was of their first match, or maybe it was their second, but it was a Hackney Yard hard point. And if you guys have played this game, you know the P2 spawns are very fucking hard to break. Like, that is not something you can really just break. So, Optic got P2 spawns broken within the first, like, 15 seconds of the map. Like, they had good side. Which, good side, if you guys don't know, good side is OP, bro. Like, I when I, when I start uploading gameplay, I'll probably start uploading it this week, maybe next week. Like... Good side is so, dude, it's such an advantage for the map. Because you can literally fight through um, the first hill. And then all you gotta do is make sure you're watching the fire car fork area. And you can wrap back there. You have one person wrap back. Get that kill, maybe there's two fork, I don't know. And even then, if they get back useless, which is the back right building of spawn, if you guys don't know. You know, even if you get into tires, you might not still break the spawn. Because, like, that spawn is just such a hard spawn to break. And this is game kind of caters toward that. Um, and, you you know, if if that spawn gets broken, you're spawning out, like, yellow. Which is the whole opposite side of the map over by P5. So, I mean, it's, I, I think there's a fundamental issue with this team. I think there's a slang issue. I think they have a lot of problems. And I think... It cannot just be a one-person change. I think it's got to be two. I don't think any of the players on this team are, are bad at all. But I think they need to do a one-for-one -one swap. Maybe, bro. I don't know if you want to let go of Dashi, but, like, I would like to see Dashi in a new environment. Because what he's doing right now on this team, you know, he just looks like he's not having fun. He's not enjoying the game. And, I mean, this game is probably the worst one they've made in a while. But still, I mean, you, you got to perform. At the end of the day, you're a pro player. You get a salary. You know, don't sit on that salary and be lazy. Like, get on, put the extra time in, and, you know, grind with your squad. But I think that team needs to change for sure. Uh, the next one I want to talk about is Minnesota Rockers. So, if you guys don't know, Alex, which has arguably been one of their best players the whole year, had an injury to his hand where he could not play. So, exceed. Yo, shout out to my last video because I guessed this one right. Who did they put in? They put in exceed. This is exceeds first time really playing at a pro level except for I think maybe champs last year I think he was on Tommy's team with Linny yeah I yeah I'm pretty sure that was a roster it was it was Linny Tommy and uh exceed I'm not for sure who did the other two were but yeah and I mean he played great at that champs but that game also caters to you know more skillful players I feel like you can do a lot more by yourself this game is a lot of teamwork so the Minnesota Rocker, I think they're good to just sit on this unless they can get a player like Gunless. Um, or maybe even pick up amateur talent. Like, if I was Optic LA, I would probably make a roster change for some amateurs. You know, Pentagram comes to mind. Um, you know, Standy would be also, I feel like, would be a viable option. Parasite even. Like, I mean, these guys are talented in the, you know, the bottom part of the amateur scene. And... I feel like they don't get enough credit. Uh, that's why I kind of tried to highlight that in my podcast so you guys would see that. Because a lot of these amateur players, bro, they are really good in terms of talent. But, like, you never know some of the fundamental ways to play the game until you're on that pro level. So you don't know how to do that. 
Uh, you can't just, that's not something you can just watch and pick up. I mean, you can get some stuff from it, bro, but you don't, you can't hear the comms, you know? You don't know what they talk about during practice, like, I mean, it, it's a tricky situation, but at the same time, it's, yeah, some of these teams need to change, bro, and I think it's, a lot of people don't like the vets coming out of the pro scene. I think it's good for the scene. I think bring some new faces in, you know, you never know what you're going to get. Uh, I mean, at least bring them on the team, and if it doesn't work, you can sub them out. But Seattle could be a team I could see making a change, although there are two people they brought up from the substitutes, War Frying, Proto, and Pander. Um, not as much Pander. I think I think he's a very consistent player. Uh, I think Proto had a little bit more of an X factor in him from what I've seen. Um, but, yeah. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to leave a like. Comment down below what you want the next video to be. Um, if you want me to do another team highlight, I know we were doing those. Um, or if you guys just want strictly gameplay, I want to know what you guys want. So, um, hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to leave a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. We're on the road to 10K. Um, you know, we're going to get there soon. So, anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. Should be out tomorrow. Deuces.